Hello everybody, my name's Terry, I'm the board modeler and this is the TU-134 Civil Airliner Kit in 1 to 1 44th scale, made by Zvezda. This is going to be our project for this video, so let's get the box open, take a look at the parts inside, and then let's get started. So here's a quick overview of all the parts you get in the kit. The kit gives you the option to build two types of aircraft, the TU-134A, which has a clear nose for the navigator, and the TU-134B, which has a solid nose containing the radar. I'm building mine as a TU-134A. Whichever version you choose to build though, you'll find that the parts have excellent surface details such as vents, fans and even the brakes on the landing gear. So, now that we've seen how nice the parts are, let's get to building then, shall we? I start off by using some side cutters to cut the fuselage halves off the sprues. I then clean up the parts by smoothing out the attachment points. The kit includes the cabin windows on two clear strips. To make sure that they fit flush, I sand down the areas where they're going to be attached. fuselage halves cleaned up and sanded down, I can start spraying the interior colour, XF1 flat black. This covers up the bare plastic on the inside of the cabin, and helps to disguise the fact that this kit doesn't actually have an interior. I also painted the outside of the nose wheel bay black, as this will be seen on the inside of the fuselage. I painted the inside of the bay's XF23 light blue which is similar to the greyish blue colour used on the interiors of Soviet aircraft. Once the paint had dried, I glued the nose wheel bay in place on one of the fuselage halves. Along with a fishing sinker, which added weight to the nose to help balance out the model. Once everything was secure, I touched up the black paint on the interior and then attached the windows. I used white glue to hold the windows in place as it dries clear and won't melt the plastic. As for the window strips, they were simply pressed into place on the side of the fuselage. The strip on the right had to be trimmed a bit to fit around the weight in the nose, but apart from that, everything fit well. Once I'd made sure the windows were securely in place, I applied glue to the two fuselage halves, and then put them together. To make sure they stayed that way, I wrapped electrical tape around the fuselage parts to hold them together as the glue dried. Once the glue had dried, I removed the tape and put some more tape on. This time though, the tape's got a different purpose. It's there to protect the detail for when I clean up the seam in the middle of the fuselage. As you can see, the tape protected the areas on either side of the seam, so that when I applied the putty, the detail wasn't damaged or filled in. Then it was a simple matter of leaving the putty to dry overnight, and then sanding everything flat to finish the job. fuselage seems smoothed out, I was able to get on with attaching some surface details, like these strakes on top, this vent on the tail, and the distinctive radar dome under the nose. On the 134A, the radar is in this odd position to make space for a navigator who sits in the nose cone. I also put the rudder on the back of the vertical stabiliser. This was a tight fit. In fact, it basically snapped into place. I then attached the cockpit windows and the clear nose cone. 
The windows were so small that I had to mask them off camera, but once that was done, I was able to secure them in place on the model with white glue. As for the cabin windows, they were protected from paint using a liquid masking solution. While the glue and the masking solution were drying on the fuselage, I got to work on the engines. I painted the air intakes on the front and the thrust reversers on the back with silver paint. The fan blades and exhaust sections for the engines were painted in gunmetal grey. Once the paint had dried, I could get started with assembling the engines. The parts fit together well, and the finished engines looked great, with a lot of fine detail. I then returned to the fuselage and sprayed the cockpit area XF-21 Sky. This mimics the interior colour of the real aircraft's cockpit framework. Before I painted the rest of the fuselage, I attached the wings and horizontal stabilisers. I did this before painting in case I needed to fill any seams, but as it turns out, I needn't have worried. The fit of the parts was near perfect and only required minimal sanding to be smooth. Once the glue had dried, I could start priming the model. This unifies the model's colours and fills in any light surface scratches to give a nice clean coat of white for all the subsequent colours to go over the top of. With the primer dry, I started pre-shading the panel lines. The purpose of this was to darken them and simulate the slight shadows between panels on the real aircraft. And don't worry about my messy line work, it doesn't have to be perfectly neat either. With all the preparation done, it was finally time to start painting the model. While I finish up the painting, let's talk a bit about the aircraft we're building here. The concept for the Tu-134 came about after Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev made a trip to France in 1960 and flew in a Sud Caravelle. He was so impressed with the quiet cabin that on his return to the USSR, he ordered Tupolev to build a similar aircraft. The designers used the existing Tu-124 as a basis for the new jet. Its fuselage was lengthened and the engines were moved to the tail. The new plane first flew in July 1963 and was designated TU-134 later that year. The aircraft entered service in 1967 and proved to be a success, in part due to the fact that it was the first Soviet airliner to be ICAO certified. This allowed it to fly on international routes and made it highly popular with airlines across the Eastern Bloc. In addition, the jet's quiet cabin compared to earlier Soviet planes made it a hit with passengers. By 1970, Tupolev rolled out the TU-134A, which we're building here. It had space for 72 passengers and more powerful Solovyev D-30 engines, fitted with reverse thrust to aid braking. The jet was further upgraded in 1980 to become the Tu-134B. The Tu-134s continued in mainline service well into the 1990s and early 2000s, but their high fuel costs, loud engines and a series of fatal accidents turned post-Cold War Russia off the plane. The final Tu-134 passenger flight in Russia took place on the 22nd of May 2019 and was operated by Alrosa Airlines. And that's the painting done. Um, not really. You see, once everything had dried, the light grey on the underside of the fuselage looked way too dark. So I decided to correct the colour by spraying some sky grey on the panels. After all, as Bob Ross might have said if he was into model planes, there are no mistakes, only happy little opportunities for post shading. I also sprayed the black anti-glare panel in front of the cockpit. 
Once everything had dried, I gave the model a gloss clear coat to provide a smooth surface for the decals. And speaking of those decals, I started off with the big blue fuselage stripe. As it turned out, it was a little too big. It didn't quite line up properly with the windows on the fuselage, so after trimming it a bit off camera, I decided to try a different technique for the rest of the stripes. I cut the rest of the stripes into shorter sections, and after that I had absolutely no trouble with them or any of the other decals. Once I was done with the decals, I gave them a protective clear coat. And once that had dried, I got started on weathering. I applied a black wash over the entire model. and then wiped away the excess with a moist paper towel. The wash settles into panel lines and surface details, helping to define them and mute the overall colour scheme. I then used super glue to attach the engines to the fuselage. and then got started on the landing gear. I began by gluing the wheels onto the main landing gear bogies. Completed the nose gear assembly. Then I attached the finished landing gear units to the aircraft. If the landing gear on this kit looks delicate and finely moulded, that's because it is. Take care during this step to avoid accidentally breaking things, and yes, I speak from experience. After the landing gear was on, I attached the various antennas to the aircraft's fuselage. Take care when you attach these parts because a wrong move with the tweezers will send these little antennas a very long way. And don't ask how I know that. With all the fine details securely attached to the model, I could finish off the weathering process. I put dots of oil paint on the aircraft with a toothpick and used a dry brush to streak them back in the direction of the airflow. This simulates the dust and grime that built up on the real TU-134s after years of flying through the harsh and inhospitable Soviet climates. Once my weathering had dried, I sealed and protected the model with a final semi-gloss clear coat.
And with that done, so was the model. Coming up now are some pictures of the finished aircraft. Let me know what you think of them and what you thought of the video. Hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching and see you next time.